Today I want to talk about Jack Miller and really try to round out what makes him a candidate to win the starting quarterback job at Ohio State and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, I want to talk about Ohio State quarterback Jack Miller and why I believe he's a candidate to win the job, not the least of which is he's on the roster and he is listed at quarterback along with Kyle McCord and C.J. Stroud. And C.J. Stroud is getting betting odds, right, from y'all to be the starting quarterback come September when the Buckeyes go at it and try to get back to the national championship game. But Kyle McCord is a five-star coming out of St. Joe's in Philly, and Jack Miller is a four-star coming out of Chaparral in Scottsdale, Arizona. But let's talk about how he got here in the first place, right? So he jumps on the scene as a true freshman starting quarterback who throws 53 touchdown passes at Scottsdale Christian, transferred to Chaparral, and ends up winning the job. Now, one of the things that I thought was wild interesting about him winning the job is that he has a coach that is all in on him as a player. And I believe that this is true of most high school coaches and really those of us that watch high school sports in our area. When we see a guy end up at a place like Ohio State, Oklahoma, Alabama, LSU, and so on, we want everybody to understand this is our guy. And this is the best guy that we've ever seen. And you have him. We want you to use him correctly. And we want him to get a fair shake. Because... Every guy that gets an offer to play football at one of those blue blood programs, at one of those power programs, is the best player that anybody's seen in a generation in most cases, okay? And if it's five-star, it might be two or three generations because it's that rare to see such talent. So you want to know that your guy is going to get a shot to be everything that he can be. And so much of football is about fit, about timing, and about luck. And the only way that those things come together is if you're already doing the work. And Miller has been doing the work. But one of the things that I think gets missed about him outside of the offensive line he played in was garbage. No disrespect, y'all just weren't that good. It's that the man missed a lot of his junior and senior year due to injury. And in that way, he's a lot like Justin Fields. Now, Justin Fields was by then a known commodity because he had been able to go to camps and whatnot. But Miller missed his best year to win Elite 11 due to injury, right? I don't think it's coincidence that C.J. Stroud wins the lead 11 and he vaults himself into the conversation as a five-star prospect, just missing that designation toward the end, and then getting an offer and accepting to Ohio State where you have two dudes that could show up and play. But let's talk about how Jack Miller ended up getting an offer from Ohio State. He won that offer in June 2017, which you'll remember, right? is a really wild year for a number of different reasons. I mean, at one point, you're talking about Joe Burrow and Dwayne Haskins being on the same squad. You're also getting ready to see Dwayne Haskins push for the Heisman and really come a Purdue loss away from playing in the college football playoff. And then Joe Burrow, of course, ends up transferring to LSU and becoming one of the great college football quarterbacks of all time for any given season. Like, if you want to put up one season versus one season, you could put him up against Kyler Murray. But... I would also add that Joe Burrow had been the starting quarterback in 2018 in a way that Kyler had not. But I really like trying to round out Jack Miller as having a journey not unlike Justin Fields because the reason that I believe so many people are on the Trevor Lawrence bandwagon is because the man is basically not missed games due to injury and he has won most games that he has played in. Like he put together an outstanding record in high school. I believe he lost two games. And in college, something similar, right? When he's starting football games, you have a great chance to win. And he got to start a bunch of games, and he got to put up a bunch of numbers. Fields didn't have that opportunity. One, because he was never really given the opportunity to, to compete for the starting quarterback job at Georgia. Then he transfers to Ohio State, and he has what is essentially a year and a half of good quality football. And he acqu acquitted himself very well. And Ryan Day, of all people, is very excited about that because people get to see what he can do with a quarterback who
who just came in, who learned the system as complex as it was, and then went out there to go to work. And now he's got three guys that legitimately have the talent to be quarterback, and they're going to get an opportunity to compete for the job outright. Like they said in spring media day conference that they have 112 guys on campus right now, which he said is like their fall numbers. So they're going to get a lot of reps. They'll be able to split up into three groups, and in some positions they're five deep, quality depth at those positions. Now I have questions about the free safety position with you know Marcus Hooker being indefinitely suspended and Josh Proctor being basically the guy there. You might need to move Latham Ransom or someone else over there to help get more reps in. Uh, as a matter of fact, you will have to. But I wanted to talk about Miller because I believe that he's the guy that's being lost in all of this. One, because I, I have been out there going, yes, C.J. Stroud is, is that dude coming out of Rancho Cucamonga, and I believe that. But I'm also low to pick a starting quarterback in the spring out of these three because I'm really interested to see how Ryan Day talks about them what stories the players can tell about them throughout the process. And then if Ryan Day ends up choosing what we all thought, because Lincoln Riley did this thing a couple years ago where he tried to tell us that Kyler Murray was in an outright competition with Austin Kendall. And none of us really believed it, but you needed Austin Kendall to put on his best effort to try to push Kyler. And when it looked like Kyler was going to go to the Major League Baseball draft, that was going to be Kendall's job. And Kendall was a guy that Riley had recruited and said that he wanted and wanted to keep so much so that he tried to block his transfer to West Virginia there for about a month until, you know, we all were like, yo, dog, for real, you going to do that? You got Kyler. Ch chill out. You're going to get Jalen Hurts. Chill out. And he did that. Turns out Austin Kendall wasn't that good. And Kyler, Kyler Murray is the greatest OU quarterback of all time. So uh, I want to leave those things open because I believe that in the pushing and in these dudes' belief that they have a chance to win this job, you're going to get to see their best football, and they're going to push each other to play their best football as well. So let's walk that out. Let's just see how that goes. Don't be in a hurry to name a starting quarterback in the spring, especially when you know you have an outstanding offensive line. You've got perhaps the deepest wide receiver depth chart of anybody in the country, and you've got a bunch of tailbacks in Master Teague, Travion Henderson, Evan Pryor, Marcus Crowley and Mayan Williams, who can 100% just go. So let's just see who the team picks. Let's see how they pick each other with their accuracy and with their strength. Let's see which one of these dudes actually has it to go to be the quarterback and to be the quarterback of the future. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.